This spreadsheet can be used to apply simple regression or multiple regression to individuals. In the example, we wanted to know how unusual is it for someone with a vocabulary score of 120 to score 90 or less on reading comprehension. Both variables have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. The correlation between x and y is 0.5. The first variable is always the criterion variable and the other variables are the predictor variables. You must apply the means and standard deviations of all variables and the correlations between the predictors and the criterion variable. Here we have the y-intercept and the unstandardized regression coefficient. We also have the standardized regression coefficients. If all the variables are on the same metric, in this case they are index scores, the unstandardized regression coefficients and the standardized regression coefficients will be the same. Here we have the full regression equation. Reading comprehension equals the y-intercept of 50 plus the correlation or standardized regression coefficient of 0.5 times the vocabulary score plus error. The standard error of the estimate is 12.99. The predicted reading comprehension score in this case will be 110. The observed score of 90 is 20 points below expectations. How unusual is that? The one-sided prevalence of an error of this magnitude is about 6%, meaning that about 6% of people with vocabulary of 120 will score 90 or lower on reading comprehension. In this graph, we can see the conditional distribution. 110 is the predicted reading comprehension score, and then the actual reading comprehension scores are dispersed on this y-axis. On average, they're 110, but they have a standard deviation of 12.99, and in blue, we see the region of the conditional distribution that is 90 or lower, and about 6.2% of cases score 90 or lower on reading comprehension. In this case, all we know about the person is that they score 120 on vocabulary. But what if we have more information? Suppose that the person scores 80 on working memory capacity. If we enter in 80, nothing will happen because we haven't included it in the regression equation. We click here, and now it's included. You can see here the squared semi-partial correlation coefficient. It's the proportion of unique variance accounted for by the predictor. It equals the change in R-square in a hierarchical regression, meaning that if we started with vocabulary and calculated the R-square and then we added in working memory, we will explain an additional 6.9% of the variance. Likewise, if we started with working memory and then added in vocabulary, vocabulary will add in an additional 15.9% of the variance. With two predictors, we can see that the multiple R-square is larger, and the standard error of the estimate is a little bit smaller. The predicted reading comprehension score is no longer 110, but 102.9. 90 is 12.9 points below that. For a person with this profile of predictors, 120 on vocabulary and 80 on working memory, almost 15% of people score 90 or below. Here we have the conditional distribution. The predicted reading comprehension score is 102.9 and about 15% of cases score at 90 or below. Now what if we want to contrast this profile, 120 and 80, with another profile? So if a person scored 100 on working memory, no weakness at all, how do predictions change? So with the weak score in working memory, the predicted score is 102.9. If working memory is average, the new predicted score is 108.4. In profile 1, with the weakness, this is 12.9 points below expectations. Without a weakness, it's 18.4 points below expectations. With the weakness, the prevalence is not very high, it's almost 15%. Without the weakness, it's at almost 7%. The size of the error has changed by 5.5 points, that is, 18.4 and 12.9 are 5.5 points apart so the error has shrunk. The risk of scoring 90 or lower is over two times higher with profile 1 compared to profile 2. That is, even though people with neither profile are likely to score 90 or lower on reading comprehension, it is more than twice as likely for people with profile 1 with the working memory weakness than for people with profile 2 without the working memory weakness. We can see this with the graph. 
With Profile 1, about 15% of cases scored 90 or lower. With Profile 2, about 7 or 6.9% of cases score 90 or lower. So not very common with Profile 1, but much less common with Profile 2. What if we don't talk about a score of 90, but some other threshold, some other low score for reading comprehension? Well, if it's 90, we can see that the relative risk of scoring 90 or lower is a little over two times higher with Profile 1 compared to Profile 2. If we want to know how much more likely is it for someone to score 80 or lower on reading comprehension with Profile 1 compared to Profile 2, we can see in the curve that it's almost three times higher. Even though it would be very rare for someone to score 70 or lower on reading comprehension for either profile, it is four times more likely with Profile 1 with the working memory weakness compared to the Profile 2 without the working memory weakness. In the spreadsheet, there's a list of all the technical details if you're interested. In addition, if you want a standalone program rather than a spreadsheet, I recommend highly John Crawford's excellent program, RegBuildMR, and there's a link to it in the spreadsheet. It does roughly what this spreadsheet does, only better.